Hey everybody, it's Scotty from Scotty's Record Shop. I'm going to try to make a quick video. Uh, I haven't done an artist profile for a while. I haven't had speech therapy for a while either, huh? And um, this one is going to be of the Guess Who. I, I've seen more than one person talk about this on um, the YouTube, Facebook page, and other places too. Did, did all they ever put out was greatest hits? I mean, it's kind of a silly question. Of course, that's not the case, but rarely do you see people showing a lot of guess who so i'm going to show a lot of guess who okay if it's okay with you um they started out actually as um late 50s early 60s actually they go back way back um with a guy named chad allen on lead vocals um burton cummings wasn't around until 66 ish or so uh and they made a fair amount of records too um the biggest of which was shaking all over, at least here in America, on um, Skepta Records. Uh, they put out several singles on Skepta and a couple of other labels as well, between 65 and 67-ish or so, 68. Um, they were on Quality up in uh, Canada. Uh, actually, I'm not going to get into the story but of how they ended up with the name The Guess Who, for the single Shaken All Over, which was really just a huge, huge single for them, uh, all over the place, you know. Um, there are a lot of collections of this era of music. The best one is by, uh, uh, I believe it's Sundays. This is my opinion, the best one. It's a, a double CD, like double album or something comp. I don't have the album. I want to get it someday. It's been out for about 10 years, though. It's called Shaken All Over. It's got a blue cover. Um, but it really does a good job of covering like from like 64-ish up to through before they were signed to MCA. Not MCA, but the RCA, I'm sorry. Um, the only vinyl collection that I have is this one. This is bad. It covers all beat to hell and everything else. It's called Shaking All Over. It's on Springboard, which was a label, um, one of these cheesy, um, like Pickwick type labels, Springboard. This has got a little bit of the Chad Allen stuff, but mostly Burton Cummings. I think that's too bad. Not that that's not good stuff, but um, that other comp that I told you about on Sundays uh, is is just a much more thorough um, collection. Um, I don't have on vinyl any of that stuff. Um, there's a great album that came out in 67, 68. Um, it, it, one of these two things. It was the Guess Who and the Staccatos. And uh, it came out in Canada. I think it was like Coca-Cola or somebody put it out. It's kind of hard to find. Great album, though, that really kind of rocketed both of those bands. Um, of course, the Staccatos didn't keep their name. Um, people in Canada go, oh, we know who they are. But people in America know who they are, but they don't know who they are. Staccato's actually turned into, they changed their name to the Five Man Electrical Band. Most people know those guys, Signs and, and uh, a couple of other things that they did. Great band from Canada as well. Okay, so first one on, M I want to keep saying MCA, I don't know what it is, RCA. Um, and this one... Uh, 1969, first really smash for them with Burton Cummings here in America. Um, Wheatfield Soul. This is a, a, a mid 70s pressing, I believe. I'm not going to take all these out. I don't have a heck of a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time, either, right? So I'm just going to show you the albums. Um, okay, what do we got here? We got Can Wheat. This is another 70s pressing. Um, this has um, laughing and um, what else is on here? I'll we'll say these eyes, but anyway, don't have my reading glasses on. Um, one thing that's about that's cool about this album is the song "No Time," which was a big hit for them in, in 1970. Um, the original version is on here. It's a lot longer. It's a lot looser. I actually dig it more than the single version. Randy Bachman, this is the last album officially that he'd do with them, with the Guess Who, and he'd been with the band right from the beginning. Um, 
American Woman, 1970. Huge album for them. Fantastic record. This is a gatefold. I'll show you. The, at least it says gatefolds. I'll show you gatefold. Gatefold on that one. Um, one thing that I feel bad about the Guess Who is like everybody talks a lot about Randy Bachman as they should. Great guitarist, but it's like Randy Bachman leaves and it's like who cares about the other guitar players? However, the Guess Who continued on after Randy Bachman and did great albums. You know, um, and in my opinion, probably the best after Randy Bachman was this one, Share the Land, 1970. There's your back. Okay. Um, really fantastic stuff from the Guess Who. All of these, by the way, are on RCA. Um, here's our next LP. Good show of that one. That's why I showed you the back first. Wasn't that good of me? You can't tell that I'm visually impaired, right? Okay. Fantastic. Um, again, I personally think all these albums are pretty damn good, you know? Um, and I think it's a shame that people kind of blow off some of these. Um, the next one we get is the album Rockin'. Another the gatefold. From the band. Yeah. Um, actually, the first Guess Who album I ever got was this one. And the odd funny thing about this is I was a kid and all I saw was The Who. I don't know why. I was thinking it was a live Who album. I didn't quite get that it was the Guess Who. And I remember getting the A-Track, yes, the A-Track home. And being really PO'd because I didn't know any of these songs, really. I mean, I I, mean, I was like seven, okay? And I was really angry that it wasn't like the Who. But I started really digging it. And it was, you know, the jumping off point for me for digging the Guess Who. Okay. Number 10. Can I see that? Okay. Guess who? Number 10. Next one that came out here in America was Flavas. I'm purposely staying away from the um, the compilations until the very end. I've got a couple to show you. Um, road Food. This had their last really, really big U.S. hit. Clap for the Wolf Man. Great song from them. Another good album. This album kind of, next one kind of gets poo pooed. It's kind of the end of the Guess Who, really, with Randy Bach, not with Randy Bachman, but um, Burton Cummings. Um, people kind of, some people kind of poo poo on this, and I, I, I still kind of like this album, 1975. The great thing about this album, I want to show you the die cut cover. Watch what happens. And there's the guys, and kind of fits in here. It's a little die cut thing. It's really neat. Um, again, it's not a bad album. I mean, it's not Share the Land, but it's not that bad. Um, this last one came out in 1976, and really, it's from what I understand, it's the sessions that came after, and I could be wrong about this, the sessions that came after American Woman, right before Bachman left to do Brave Belt, which eventually turned into BTO. Um, they put these sessions out. The Guess Who did continue without um, Burton Cummings for a while. Um, you know, all this for a song, and there were a couple of other albums. And I've never heard those albums. I don't know. I, you know, if I see them cheap enough, I'll pick them up. Um, just a couple of compilations. One that everybody's seen. One that everybody should have. You know. Uh, it's a gatefold cover. Let me show you the gate on this one. There you go. Just pull the heck of it. Wonderful album. One more for you. And it's another gatefold. Best of the Guess Who Volume 2. Of course, there's tons of repackaging of Guess Who comps. It's just kind of over excessive, but that's just a quick look at what I have for the Guess Who. So. 
hopefully this takes care of any of these. Did they put out anything other than best outcomes? <sighs> yeah. Anyway, as always, I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing to my channel, uh, for watching these silly videos and all that stuff. Hey, until next time, everybody, peace and love.